starting now, I'm going to begin this moment in time. Yes. So I'm good. Good. We're, we are all good and present and, and our right enough minds. I mean, I know we're all crazy, but we're sane enough at the moment, right? Maybe? Uh, I don't think I am. Josh, you are here, correct? Still? Nope. <laughs> is he... Is he just messing with me right now? I, I don't know anymore. I don't know. It is Josh. He's kind of insane. He could. He could just be. It, it, it is quite possible he is being quiet just to play a mind game. Eh. You know, not everyone likes screwing with you as much as Dizzy does. Um, Mache? I was going to say, I think Mache <laughs> wins. I think he I does. said not everyone. I think Mache takes it further, personally. Yeah. Okay, but I don't think is I'm not e everyone, for goodness sakes. No, he is not, and thank God. <laughs> I, I love I you, just, Spangle. I just so would much. not. I just would not know what to do. I really wouldn't if everyone was like Mache. <laughs> but I love you, Spangle. Is it like that Scrubs video you posted the other day? In that way. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Guy love? <laughs> Bro <laughs> Bromance? Bromance. Uh, that, that Scrubs video was priceless. Also, the picture associated with that. <laughs> <laughs> no! Yes! No. So I've started recording already. I, I, I kind of want to include that conversation, so I think I might. You know what? I will. <laughs> wow, then, then I feel really bad for not being a part of it. <laughs> Don't worry, it was all about you. So, I, I'll, we'll have a belated intro of Welcome Bronies to the Fob Equestria podcast, the official podcast of Fob Equestria. This week we have Red Sage, Mache, Josh Scorcher, otherwise known as Commander Firebrand or the Fiery Joker, and myself, Spangle, your somewhat regular host. I'm, I think I only missed, like, what, one podcast? Yes. One podcast. Okay, so yes, that is me. But for those of you not familiar with Red Sage, this is his first time joining us. He is in my division, hey. the literature division. He does reviews every now and again, you know, that that cool stuff. Whenever Spangle, like, sits outside of my house with a shotgun, hey, Red, you haven't posted a review in a month. I'm going to come inside and make you make you read that fic and review it. I'm I can like, only do fine. that. I can only do that so often. I mean, plane tickets are expensive. I know. I mean, I guess I should just work harder. You should. You should stop making me waste all my money. Horrible person, you. So, talking about the literature division, um, I guess I should mention that I am opening up a spot for one more reviewer. Anyone who is willing to fill that position now, since it is a junior staff role, it is not military experience exclusive. So, if you are not a military brony, but you would like to do fan fiction reviews of sorts, um, you can contact me at our email, fobequestria at gmail.com, and just say, hey, I would like to be open to this position for a little bit of, of an idea of what that includes. Basically, I would give you a story, you would write your review of it, and I, basically after reviewing it myself, making sure it's accurate, fair, all that good stuff, it'll get posted to our, our website is just a way of um, increasing the amount of content we are putting out. And really, it's just a matter of, for the literature division, due to the intensive nature of some of the fan fiction, some of them are just really long, and so it takes a while to get a review out. More staff will be helpful in helping us generate regular content. So, like I said, I am opening a spot for one more reviewer. Currently, there are four counting myself. And another one would certainly be nice. The part that he forgot to mention was the hazing ritual that everyone else other than Spangle will put you through. Yes, you must read <laughs> the worst fan fiction that Spangle can find. No, I, I wouldn't be responsible for finding it. I would put Tweak on finding it. Because God knows. <laughs> well, he, he, he just give you faith and doubt or the abundance. No, it has to be one that has been reviewed yet. And abundance is in progress of being written already. So. Which I still need. Which you, you and really I still need to bad? kick his butt. Yeah, uh, well, it has its ups and downs. Um, the ups being that the one-liners that you find in there are priceless. The one, the one-liners are really good. Oh, the fight scenes are really, really detailed, and they're really awesome. 
The rest of it, it's just 80% exposition, emo dialogue, and what? And when this guy blows the dialogue, it really blows the dialogue. <laughs> wow. Oh, and there's also oh, and there's also gross mischaracterization. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that sounds like any fic that I would ever write. <laughs> and try not to say anything about my writing here. Try not to say anything. Yeah, you would write Twilight as a whiny emo moron. Wow. That would be horrible. That no, that would be horrible. Never. No, that Red would be Sage a disgrace never... to nerds anywhere. And I, I'm proud of nerds. We, we we are not whiny emos. We we just well, like some books. Of us, anyway. I you really Red Sage, honestly, when I well I hmm. You have aspects of nerd and yet not. You're like a weird hybrid. What do you mean by that? I'm not quite sure. I really don't. It's just how that, I that, feel that really about deep. you. That was really deep. <laughs> Are you mocking me? I'm mocking your insults, not you. I wasn't insulting you. That wasn't meant as an insult. It really wasn't. Okay, okay, fair enough. I would never mock you. I mean, the commanding, my commanding officer on the FOB, that could get me, like, demoted or move to reading shipping fix or something like that. <laughs> oh. I'm sure there's worse things. That is a low blow. Yeah, I yeah. I save all the good fan fictions for my reviews. I yeah, I think I think it's safe to say that I think everyone on the I, I think everyone on the FOB hates shit fix. Especially intermain six shipping. Uh, oh mm. no, 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 no. I don't no. mind I can I can deal with intermain six fix shipping. I can't deal with OC to main six. Shipping. I can't deal with that either. That makes me want to hurt people. I, I I honestly have a huge issue with intermain six shipping, um, or or shipping really of the main six or main characters in general. Uh, yeah, exactly. But all that it's, stuff, it's just kind of like been done to death. If you look on any new posted fic and you see for the ten thousand and twelfth and a half time that there's another Apple Dash fic out there, it's like <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean those two are incompatible. They're they're pr they would argue constantly. Yes, they would. And honestly, it's just it, I, a, I can I, handle. Another okay, one shipping. I can't stand another one. I can't stand is Flutter Mac. Those two would what? be too shy to talk to any. What? No, I'm that's sorry, actually common. But... That's a really common ship. I I can't stand it. I don't read ships, but that just sounds ridiculous. See, I can handle shipping with. OC and background characters, or OC and OC, or just background characters, that's fine for me. Because... Lyra and Bonbon? Bon? Lyra and Bonbon, bon, I... Uh, <laughs> it's a, it depends on okay. how it's Be done. Before we descend into the pure shipping argument, I believe there was something you wanted to say about coins. Um, well, we, we'll get to that. Uh, so. Okay. But first back to, shipping. Back to the shipping. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> yes, so uh, shipping... It can be done well, and uh, honestly, I have no problem with a good romance as long as it's well written. But I feel like any time you bring in the main six, you're just treading on very, very unstable ground, or any major character for that matter, like Luna and Celestia. Oh um, God! That unstable ground is the bones oh, of ten thousand other fix. Oh yeah. Or what about um, it's like Twilight and Shining Armor. Those ones are. Oh, oh. Uh, the uh, please why? no incest. Why? Because some people in this fandom because... just are they go there when they really shouldn't. That's all I'm gonna leave it as on that one. Just no. All my no. Nope, spider. Nope, 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 nope. Nope, spider. Dot gif. Indeed. The greatest gif in the world. You know, I, I don't want to make you angry, and I believe it's pronounced GIF too. But I read something about a month back that the creator uh, posted that it was to be pronounced GIF, which really bothered me. Honestly, that's how um, I used to say it back when I was. Here's my problem: the Marine Corps base, Camp Lejeune. Well, his apparently he his descendants say that his name was pronounced Lejeune, but guess what? There's no R. I am today. I am not. Freaking 70 years ago, it's Lejeune. Just That's saying. fair. We have a building on our campus. It's uh, called apparently pronounced Marcus Hall, but it's spelled M-A-R-Q-U-E-Z. It has become Marquez forever since, even though the patron who donated the, the money for the building 
gave out about 500 free shirts with uh, his last name on it and the pronunciation just for everybody to wear to make sure everyone got it right. Nobody gets wow. it right. Wow. <laughs> uh, so, effective derail. Good job. Way to go. It's all your fault. <laughs> Moving on to the next topic, Score. I guess. Uh, we can just move nicely along to fob coins, which have already been mentioned. So if you haven't already heard from, well, everywhere, apparently it's already taken off and gotten really popular. We have coins now, challenge coins, which if you don't know what that is, it's kind of understandable. If you're in the military, you should know what a challenge coin is. I mean, they teach you that stuff in basic. Well, maybe not explicitly, but you know. You know. You know. You just know. For those of you not military, a challenge coin is kind of just like something saying you belong to a unit and there are drinking games that are occasionally played with them. And it, well, not really anymore. That tradition's kind of died out, hasn't it? Uh, not quite. It's it's losing. Like, it's, it, it's loose. Fading but away. It's still there. But it's still existent. So, um, I guess they're just cool to have, honestly. It's, it's, I think it's a lot of people's, like, little, ooh, shiny complex. Because <laughs> everyone shiny. likes them. I mean, personally, I'm really happy about them. I, I'm getting one, and I'm very happy about getting it. And it's something cool to have, I guess. Say, look at this nice thing I've got. But they've been apparently really popular. Um, there was a post made on our website saying how you can get them. And honestly, demand has been just insane. It looks like we're probably going to have to order more. Which... Uh, yes. Um, I'm going to speak to Silvermane, but we may be sold out, if not near sold out by now. But we will be ordering... I don't see any reason why we want to be ordering more. Oh, obviously, yeah. With, with this kind of demand selling out within like a few days of releasing them, you need more. So we'll we'll, we'll discuss that. We'll get more information. Yep. And so it, it's it looks like this might be a way. I, I'm going to touch on a bit of a sensitive topic. Some people don't like to talk about, but um, right <clears> now <throat> the money is being used to fund a thank you lunch, and this was mentioned in the post. But it also depending on how much sales are generated by this. We may use it to fund things that we normally pay for out of pocket when it comes to the FOB Equestria endeavors, such as an animation that may be happening sometime in the near future. Little teaser hint hint sort of stuff. Don't tease them. Um, we, we have a lot of things that we do for you guys that we end up always paying for out of pocket. I mean, it, so it, it's... Or with time. Or with time. and um, Mostly out of pocket. Mostly out of pocket. <laughs> Which means I can't go to nearly as many conventions. So, like, these coins, this initial investment, completely out of pocket. This luncheon originally was going to be completely out of pocket. Um, this, this animation, which is in the works, was going to be completely out of pocket. And it, it's, it's only, we, we're only a list of grunts, okay? Well, most of us. Most of us. Most of us. We, we only make so much money. And we'd like to keep some of our money so we can spend it on things hey, that we right now want. You, grunts get paid more. But... Well, that's because... Don't complain, Red. <laughs> All right, fair. Keep going. For the record, Red is ROTC. And he's about to commission, like, in a year. So... Woo. He'll be making nice LT pay, real like real life military lieutenant pay, or I'll still be stuck here earning like probably at that time frame E5 pay. So I hate you. And by then I'll be out, okay. so I can still make fun of him. <laughs> you guys are always free to make fun of me, and you know you didn't need my permission for that because you weren't going to ask for it. Nope, <laughs> never nope, intended to. Not ask. Not even. So coins um might be providing us with a way since. We have been limited by our funds, our personal spare cash up until this point. Uh, these coins might be a way that allow us to do more for you guys. So, um, like on, party is oh, oh never like uh, we we kicked around the idea of helping with conventions and helping organize conventions, and I'm not going into any more detail on that because um, I don't want to be making any false promises, but. Like I said, maybe a way for us to just provide more to this community, which is um, the military bronies obviously are who we are catering to, but we also are trying to bring more to the brony community as a whole. So, Mache, anything you want to talk about with the coins and maybe 
talk, touch on uh, what else is going on with the logo? Shirts. Shirts. Indeed. That is all. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, still working on the shirts. Fun times, real life stuff comes up, and you know when your train breaks down and you get stuck in traffic for hours and hours and hours, and you work a lot, can't always get it as soon as possible. Yeah. So real uh, well, that's kind of the downside about having most of our staff active military. It really yes. is um, because it military tends to suck up a lot of your free time and leave you with very little of it. So that's part of the reason why we didn't exclude, uh, you know, civilians from junior staff positions. But uh, I've touched on this before, um, but people have been a little, oh, why are you discriminating when it comes to head staff positions? And I, I feel like I didn't articulate it that well previously. So let me try this again. When it comes to the head staff position, the reason we are looking for people with military experience is because we, while we are providing content to the Brody community as a whole, like I just previously said, we are catering to military Bronies. We are trying to gear our content towards providing specifically for them. And if you don't have any military experience, it's kind of hard for you to understand what a military brony might be looking for when they're coming to a website for content. So, and providing specifically to that niche. So while that's why we want the head person in each staff, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I said that horribly, why we want the staff in each head position on our website to be military so they are in charge and directing things, and why, you know, a lieutenant on our site, you know, quote unquote lieutenant, the junior staff doesn't have to be military is because they are still working under that military head. Um, guidance. Yep, guidance. Thank you. So it, I, I hope I've, <laughs> rah, rah. I hope I <laughs> and, and, uh, articulated myself a bit better this time around. And hopefully, you know, that kind of maybe deflects a bit of the people thinking we're just being very discriminatory when it comes to only allowing military experience and head staff positions because we're just trying to provide the best content we can for the military bronies and i'm sorry if that means you can't be as active as you perhaps might want to be in applying for a head staff position that opens up on our website but at the same time like i said it, it it's just how we are running things so yeah Shirts, getting back on that topic, they are planned, but not available yet. There will be a post when they are, um, and one of us should really get around to once, especially once shirts become available, making a merchandise or store section um, on the website. One of us will. <laughs> one, it will happen. But will uh, they be loud and obnoxious looking? Like, heck yeah, I'm a military brony. No, th they'll be standard military style shirts at first you know look nice little patch and the we will do left breast awesome pocket things that um, is all that you need to be concerned of awesome stuff our first our shirt for our first shirt's gonna look like a standard unit shirt you know emblem left left breast i just want to know if i can annoy the rest of the stuck up cadet corps and then you'll have a nice little design on the back um if any of you have seen our current shirts which will not be the uh, the design that comes out but our current shirts have the military bronies on the back as well with the silhouette of the royal guard so i believe that is our first planned shirt design but more will more more are going to be coming out so um eventually we just have to get designs lined up there's been a few ideas tossed around in the past that may or may not be turned into actual shirt designs i i have those written down somewhere and we'll see how things go on that front. But shirts in the works. Yeah. Also. Yay. Yay. Mache, I know you had something you wanted to talk about when it something about your OC video you wanted to mention. Yes. Still in the works. Still in the works? Is that is yes. that all you wanted like, to say? Like That's I said, it? Is, I thought, uh, originally it was planned to be out this week, except, you know, the whole everything happened this week and I literally had no time to do anything yeah i know how that is um did i did i announce video last week during... i think you touched on it okay well basically uh i guess i'll go over it again um oc tutorial of how not to suck 
Yes, basically it is going to be a hu the intentions behind it is to be humorous in nature, but also a bit educational. Um, basically, how not to make a bad OC. Now, is this in just? I, I, this is a question that just came to my mind, which I don't think was covered last week. Is this just going to be like color scheme wise, or no, the whole the, the whole, whole shebang? Thing. Okay, so well, background and everything. What do you mean background? Oh, story? No, I'm not a writer. I am not going okay, to Okay, so not background, not but personality-wise and, like, special talent-wise? Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. I have I have touched strongly on both of those aspects. Because we've had enough Mary Sues. We really have. We've also had enough black and red alicorns with controller cutie marks. Controller? <laughs> Controller. How, many times, controller. how many times have you seen an Xbox controller as a cutie mark? Please. Once I is too many. You. Once I is too many. I saw, well, one time I did see a PlayStation cutie mark, but this was actually a uh, fic where um, this particular pony was the personification of the vice of sloth. That's fair. I mean, how much would it suck for that to be the only thing you're good at ever? I mean, you'd have to move to Korea, and even then you probably wouldn't make a good living. Well, for the purposes of do having done my research beforehand, I can tell you a lot. A lot. Too many. Even when I wasn't specifically looking for them, I had seen multiple, which is what gave me the idea. I'm I trying still, to keep Cutie Marks original. I still am all for once is too many. One is too much. That's all. Like, <laughs> it's, it's a horrible Cutie Mark. Honestly. And I'm sorry if you have a OC with an Xbox controller cutie mark, but maybe you should rethink. I have rethink. no sympathy for you. I'm sorry I'm hurting their feelings. Kind of. So but at the same not, time... I am. I'm sorry. An Xbox controller or any kind of gaming cutie mark in general, unless it is highly original, is not an excuse. Yep. I agree. Yes, we 100%. know you're a gamer. Yes, we know you want your pony to be a gamer. Yes, we know you have not an ounce of originality in you because oh. Call of Duty is not the greatest. Honestly, if, if that's ever. the only special talent you can think of when you think of yourself, maybe you should try like actually deep Going exploration. Going outside. Or, well, no. like, putting a smiley face. I've never seen a smiley face for a cutie mark. That would be more original than an Xbox controller. I don't know. Can you count Shirley? I mean, she's got three more. They're, they're, they're smiling they're, flowers. But... I was going to say, they're smiley flowers. No, just... Still more original, but I totally didn't think of that. No, I know you didn't. But, honestly, like, I, I wasn't going to say go outside. I was just going to say actually take a look at yourself and your personality and you know something a little deeper than i play video games who doesn't play video games this day and age i mean really come well, on it's like, that, it's like the um the cutie mark for my actual um oc it's like not that not the oc for my fan fiction it's like the oc my actual uh, oc's uh cutie mark is that as a comedy mask on fire i like it and i like read your stuff it fits your. It really fits you, Josh. What about you, Misha? What mine? Tritium. Tritium. Oh, A the it, element. Is that H3? Yes. Hmm? yes. Well, sweet. Yes, it is actually um, the atomic structure, like shown yes. with electrons Ooh. orbiting it. I've seen this with the with the old um the old model uh for the molecular structures. Yes. He is an I, adorable OC, by the way. If you have not seen his <laughs> I've, I've seen it. <laughs> and now, people now, really like to lay it on thick how adorable Mache is. <laughs> we got we gotta go on a roll. Spangle, you, your cutie mark. Come on. Um it's a seven point star. And there is actually a lot of symbolism behind that. But uh I I and don't feel good. like going into that's exposition good. behind that at the moment. And I had the honor of creating the He did create the vector for it. Mache is awesome, and I love him. I love you too, Spangle. Not like a brother, Oh, though. ship it! Because <laughs> it's Gyla! Oh, God, no! Kill it with fire! Intermain, FOB, a question of stuff shipping. It's, it's no. not Gyla. No. 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 no! no! Wait, no! No, God, please. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. I, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I just, it's gave, out there. I just gave the people an idea. You, I just yeah, gave them ideas. It's, it's going to happen. I, <laughs> well, I hope to God not. I really Josh hope that we are... Josh is not kidding. 
Josh is really not kidding. I had a guy who I was collabing with, and you know what this jerk did as soon as he got his hands on uh, my OC name? Started writing a gay clop fic. I don't know if he's oh, finished God. yet, but I don't want to know. No. no, Josh, I am hoping to God that no. no one, like, I'm hoping to God we are relatively unknown enough, and no <laughs> one in our viewership what? is evil enough to do that. Please. Just God, no. <laughs> Like, I, I understand, like, we, we get a few hundred views per podcast, that's respectable, but... Yes, please. except if you look at our Facebook, we jump like 150 likes in two days. So, please that's God like a no. 30% increase in 48 hours. I, please, no. I can... People of the world, bronies, we appeal to you. You are better than this. Don't do this. <laughs> if it happens, I'll I, just. I know all you these do guys. realize that the more you egg them on, yes, to right now you this are happens, challenging them. If this happens, <laughs> okay. So the topic accepted. change. The weather is warm today, isn't it? <laughs> and then, this is where you say yes, Red. It's, it's 90 it degrees and it sunny. Is. It's 90 degrees and sunny in Arkansas. Yes. It's actually miserably humid, but other than, other than that, nice weather. But if it happens, I hate. It's a. The, I hate summer. I I can't stand the summer. I can't stand the heat. You, I I feel for you because I'm out on a flight line under the sun working on godforsaken C130 legacy model engines. It's for a, those of you I, not, I love winter. It's a, I love the cold. I can yeah, stand winter. the cold. Me I too. like. I'm a, I'm a winter spring. guy. You. I like spring. Miche, I spring think is it's reasonable. Nice. Yeah, spring is a nice temperature. Because when you. Freaking walk outside at freaking 4.30 in the morning and it just snowed and your car is frozen solid to where you can't even open your door because it's frozen. This that is, is not fun. That's no. spring where I live and Spangle can attest to it. Spring is where the weather <laughs> goes from being bipolar to just completely psychotic. Yeah, Colorado, Colorado in the mountains. Colorado's horrible about it. I, I, there is a, a part of me that is somewhat glad I don't live there anymore. A little bit. Traitor. It wasn't my decision. It was the Air Force's. Not my... Not my... Honestly, I would have preferred to stay in Colorado as opposed to Arkansas. I really would have. But the Air Force is not about what I want. It's about what the Air Force needs. Uncle Sam. Yeah, don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you wondering, Red is not getting his desired job in the Air Force because of Air Force needs. And that's why he is so upset about this. I don't know. I think I've resigned myself at this point. I'm no longer upset. Just you've a accepted bit it. Amused. You've you've gone. Yes, I I just have to wonder how I managed to pick the one degree that would convince them to lock me up stateside and never let me go do anything fun. So you, you've gone through all the stages of grief, then. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that's healthy. It's healthy. Unless you just unless you're still in denial, which is possible. I don't think so but I'm no psychologist. <laughs> you just think you're okay with it, but the reality is you're still horribly upset. On the inside, we're, what, what are you on the inside, man? A, a deeply insecure child that needs to be loved? No, you don't tell her that. <laughs> uh, but yes, if that fan fiction becomes a thing, I will be using it to initiate the new reviewer. I will never tell you. I will use it to initiate the new reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> that will be the hazing oh, ritual. Okay, uh. yes, yes, agreed. Uh, Dizzy will approve this. Tweak will love it. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, uh, honestly, and, though, I, I need to give them a Vic. See, the, the it's a double-edged sword. Because any Vic I give a new guy, I have to read myself to verify that it's accurate. Okay, if you're a good fanfiction reader, you have a stockpile of bookmark links of all the ones that you've rated as your personal. These are awesome. These are good. I do. These are okay. Actually, you're right. And I and did so that with you Dizzy. probably have a pile that you can just say, okay, read this one. It's what I do whenever one of my friends comes to me and is like, hey, do you want fiction? Can you give me fiction? And I'm like, but well, what genre? But that's artificial. That's artificial. See, I, what do you I, mean that's artificial? It's fanfiction. He needs to just run out blind... Balls oh, deep oh no, in some no, random no, no, fiction. No, because then he'll do exactly what I did. I didn't know what fan fiction was. And this is the day before I left for well, oh, more but you or less on 4chan. And no, 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 no. I first thing I opened up was something called Cupcakes, because I saw it was rated. Yeah. Well, it was a six star. And I read this and went, wow, 
This is pretty creepy. I didn't know people made stuff like this. Okay, well, I'll read another one, see what it's like. What is this Rainbow Factory people talk so highly of? <laughs> wow, this is really messed up. Two stories and I have not read and still will never read. First two fan fictions, but actually, I think that turned out okay. There is some merit to Rainbow Factory, in my opinion. I've right. never read Cupcakes. It's I've seen the animation. It literally sounds like it does not exist for anything except being grotesque. It's a troll fic, believe it. It is. Um, go, but go, Rainbow go look Factory at the Rainbow Dash Presents at, version. I can um, handle it. Rainbow Factory actually has some legitimate quality storytelling to it. I can handle dark. Okay, if there's a little bit of dark features and like a little bit of gore legitimately implied, like, uh, I mean, applied, sorry, uh, such as in a war fic where, you know, they're describing soldiers, you know, their brains getting blown out and stuff like that. That is fine. I can handle that. I mean, honestly, Daylight Burning, its introduction scene where Luna absolutely gets fucking mangled has a purpose and I can deal with that. But Grimdark, where it's just gore and grotesque for the sake of it with no purpose really other than just like i said for the sake of it i can then try Grimdark. rainbow factory because it actually has like some sense of okay Boy, i might give rainbow factory a chance then but yes yes thank you Miche. i've been uh, trying to convince really him to do only, this really the only uh, <laughs> fic, the fix i've read of like the big three of pony fan fiction which are like fallout equestria um, my little dashy and my little dashy <laughs> Those are the big, th the big three. Uh, I've your really eyes. read My Little Dance. I've I, really only uh, read My Little Fallout. Dance. Fallout. I just finished Fallout last night. How was Holy that? Holy crud! Um, it was good. The ending left a little bit to be desired, but you oh. know, spoilers will get me oh. shot. So, uh, I really need to read that before our possible interview with possible KCAT. interview. Yeah, I couldn't stop fanboying. Actually, as a whole, though, looking at it, it was really, really, really good, and only one thing bothered me was the constant, constant application of do sex machina. Because if your characters uh, aren't, are not surviving their encounter with a big bad in the previous chapter, and they only survive because they get saved, and then you give them a harder enemy in the next chapter, don't expect them to beat it on their own. Yeah, I... I day of Sex Machina is certainly, in my opinion uh, it's okay it can be okay to use it once if applied properly and for those oh. wondering deus ex machina is basically an act of god somehow like something random out of left field comes in and saves the day it's basically for D &D yes, players. And, and yes yes and for and the thing is a lot of people confuse confuse that whenever something comes right the heck out of nowhere and is bad for the characters that is not deus ex machina that is diabolus ex machina Yes. For any of you D&D &D players that might be listening to this, this is what happens when your DM sent you in to take out something too big, realize it, and went, oh, I don't want to kill off their characters because then they're not going to like it. So then the the random level 20 higher than your character's hero walks in and saves all your butts and then leaves. Just then out leaves. of nowhere, and that's um, it. Yeah, so uh, like I said, applied once, it can be okay. But if you use it repetitively in a story, I feel like you're just copping out, honestly. Even once is kind of a bit of a cop-out. Um, like I said, unless it's really well done. But most of the time it isn't. So, anyway. Uh, I, we mention it so casually in passing. Yes, the literature division is expanding its focus to include author interviews with any who will be willing, I suppose. Join us. Anyone who is kind of a notable author, especially if we've done a review of their fic on our website, um, we will be reaching out to... Uh, we already have Totally Not A Brony's interview done. I really should get on editing that and posting that because, you know, I should stop being lazy. I, I'm <laughs> I, I'm joking. I, I've just been busy. Not you should, lazy. You should stop with the self-deprecation. I really should, shouldn't you. I? I really should. Um, yes. But, yes, so interviews are happening. And, like I said, uh, I... I definitely should read Fallout and Equestria before doing the KCAT interview or leave it to you or Dizzy or, you know, someone else who has read the story. Yeah, I was going to say, have story. fun. Goodbye two weeks of your life. Um, if I really sit down and focus on it, honestly, I could probably hammer it out in a week. No problem. But seeing as I have other projects I'd rather not neglect, yeah, probably two weeks or so. And yeah. Be um, I tried the first three days or first two days. I'd finished a third of the way through it, and then I just got burnt out from taking in so much literature in one go. I understand that, 
But at the same time, I have been known to... How long has followed Equestria? Like uh, 508,000 words. Okay, so over 6K. Um, I can sit through 50,000 words That would be 600K. Yeah, what he said. I'm sorry, misspoke. <laughs> Go by what I meant, not what I said. <laughs> but What did um, you mean? I meant 600K. I did. It's now just, that we're going by what you meant, and now what you also said. Said, continue. what I also said. But I can hammer out like 500... Uh, 500, 50,000 words a day um, and not really feel any sort of burnout because I honestly get so engrossed in the story. It's like how people can sit in front of a television for hours on end. I can do the same thing with fan fiction. Now, I hear you, but that's going to put you right at two weeks, which is more or less what I really? did. <clears throat> yeah, I guess when you divide... Divide by 50, that gives you 12, 12 days, 14 days and two weeks. Really? Yeah. Six... No, you're right. Fifth. Yeah, you're right. Two weeks. Honestly, I think... Huh. So it looks like two weeks time, but honestly, anyone, like I said, anyone who would be willing to do an interview us, interview with us, um, based on fan fiction authors, like I said, we're going to obviously be focusing on the people we do reviews of, as well as the big names out in the fandom, uh, probably going to try to avoid generic questions as much as possible. I mean, you guys might Have we end. ever ask generic questions. We try not to. We try to ask unique questions, you know, keep things fresh, especially when it comes to voice actors who have probably answered the same question a hundred times over every time they've been interviewed. Um, it, it, it helps to be unique. But, like I said, Totally Not a Brony is probably going to be the first interview we post. And, like I said, just check up on that. You'll see that on our YouTube channel. You'll see that on our, um, you know, our website. Our, duh, our biggest thing in a post as soon as uh, I'm able to draft it up after it is uploaded. And be, if that's something you'd be interested in, definitely be on the lookout for that. Like I said, we, we have contacted KCAT. Uh, we've talked, contacted, um, what's, what's their name? Author of Passants. Help me, please. Uh, blank here. Was that Penstroke? Yes. I, I believe that was their name. Their author's handle or whatever you want to call it. Um, but pen yeah. name. Pen name pen is name. what authors Thank call it. You. Yes, it is. I should know this being a part-time, very amateur author of sorts. Yes, you should. I'll rag on you about it later. Yes, you will. Anyway, so what, what Spangle said, go ahead. If you're at all interested, please give it a try. Um, we're not as crazy as I sound, I promise. <laughs> and like I said, be on the lookout if that's something you'd be interested in. Uh, like I said, our fan fiction reviews, they're kind of meant to, uh, again, give people an idea if this is, if these are stories they would want to read, I know Equestria Daily kind of gives a short blurb and they might include a star rating, but that doesn't really give you an idea of what the story's about. All you have is the description based uh, on the story, if it's on Fim Fiction or if it's in Google Docs, you really have no idea what it's about until you read it. So our reviews are meant to kind of give you our own personal take on it as well as a brief overview without revealing too many spoilers because I... A spangle... I hate spoilers. Malls people who put spoilers. If, if there are any significant spoilers in a review, I usually delete them completely. Or I'll, being a bit nicer about it, I will black bar it. And if you want to know, you can highlight it and then you'll see it. But if you don't want to know, it will be left there. The temptation always mocking you. Because <laughs> I'm a horrible person like that. Can um, we hear your evil laugh? Go, go on for the, no, for no, the community. No, no. Well, we will not be doing that. If you, <laughs> you'll eventually I'll do it hear. For my, you. No, you will not hear my evil laugh because no, honestly, I, I'm gonna do it for you. Uh, if if you're not gonna do an evil laugh. <laughs> <laughs> wow, That's, that was really awful. That was, that was awful. really bad. Yes. Okay. I make See, a bad. The one I need reason to work on that. The one reason I don't do my evil laugh is because that would, I I do not have the appropriate sound set up it would come across horribly distorted which might actually add to the evilness of it but um i'd rather not as well, the term is known over the world ear rape, I colorado I, like i said i'd rather not do what is known as ear rape and try it <laughs> because that is a thing um and i'd rather not have to try and fix the unfixable in editing so yeah fan fiction stuff that's cool Evil laughs, kind of fun. Shut up. <laughs> anyway, 
Uh, on to the random topic, because we spent a lot more time on FOB stuff than I thought we would. Sheesh. But the random topic of this podcast, which isn't so random, I guess, if it's partially planned, is with this e- is I'm sorry. For all those people with those cutie marks that we mentioned before. <laughs> yes, it is. With EA going on, we figured we might as well at least... Uh, EA. Wow. E3. I should just... Shame. That was a facepalm, if they heard that. Um, legitimately, they did. Huh? Obviously, they heard that. Yeah, my studio mic tends to pick up quite a bit. Uh, but, yes. E3 is going on. A lot of video games being announced. Um, so... <laughs> And we figured, might as well just, you know, jump on the bandwagon while it's, uh, while the jumping's good, I suppose. And I'm just gonna start it off by saying, oh my god, yes, Battlefield 4, thank you, EA, for, well, not really EA's doing anything, right? It's just, you know, Frostbite and those Dice. guys. Dice. Dice. Oh my god, I am, I am so fanboying over Battlefield 4 right now. They're bringing back Commander, they're reassigning the roles. I mean, just from the trailer I saw, Recon has C4 again. That is a good move in my book. They're bringing, they're increasing the squad size to five, which is, I think, a nice middle ground between the old school six and the new school four. And, you know, the destruction is just on such a better scale. And did I mention the Commander's back? Thank God. So I loved the Commander. I love the commander role as well. I mean, it just seems like they are doing a lot of things right with Battlefield 4, getting back to their roots while still keeping a lot of the good innovations from Battlefield 3. So, so yes. I'm going to run out and say, oh, finally, after nearly, actually, I believe it was actually a decade, Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes. 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 <laughs> So much no. love. Oh. Red? Finally! Red? After yes. so many stupid, stupid side stories, finally we get an actual sequel. I know. I love yes. Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. I've never played I... any of the side stories. I love Dreamly. all the Kingdom Hearts games, even though I think their stories are terrible. <laughs> I don't like the the little handheld console side stories. I think I played one for the PSP and that was decent. The the story was like, why does this? I'm like, why, why does, does this exist? story even exist? I, I, just, I just don't I just don't understand the story. It's like it's all it's like Birth by Sleep is almost a retcon. It I, just confuses me. I'm like I, I'm like, how does this how does this like title? St- how does it justify? Oh, if, you, oh, if, that, oh, if, that, oh, if Birth by Sleep confuses you, then do not play Dream Drop Distance. I'm not it, going to. It has time travel in it. Yay, like, time what, travel! What is all this? Like, I just don't understand why they have to make all these side stories. How does it enrich my experience with the main well, game? Let me share you a quote from a uh, senior developer. Um, senior yeah. developer? <laughs> Si, he, he, uh, he said that he wanted to put plot twists in Kingdom Hearts for the sake of putting in plot twists. Really? But I don't understand. Not what kidding. kind of That's what a great the hell move. plot twists are they doing? Like, I just don't understand. I was being sarcastic when I said that was a great move. In case Obviously. anyone failed to pick up on that. Well, listen to Mr. Literature on plot twists, but yeah. I, I'm a... Just well, I don't to okay. understand. Are you gonna Why can't okay? kill? Why? All right, let's try that a third time. We're yeah, all something at once. Like, yes, I managed to kill the conversation, even even in the fog. Still got it. Yep. Silence. So, like, I wish they would just focus on making the main games, and like stick to a freaking company. I'm tired of having to have every single handheld in existence and every single console in existence to play every game in a series. They had freaking mobile games with some like freaking crap oh, way back when. The DS, that game, the 3DS, oh, that game, the Kingdom Hearts Coded. I, that is the only game in this series that I absolutely hate. But I don't want a 3DS. I don't want to play Kingdom Hearts on a DS. No, but why the mobile, the mobile to... one is the mobile one I hate. <laughs> like, why do you have to do this to me? 
Why can't you just stick to because like I, a console? Because I want to milk this franchise for all it's worth. <laughs> yeah, money yeah, grubbing. Yeah, it seems like they're, they're saying like, oh, well, okay, so we want everybody in the world to play our game. But not everyone has, you know, a PS2. So let's, you know, make a game for the PSP. And then everyone who gets a PSP, they'll say, oh, look how awesome this series is. I'm going to buy a PS2 and buy the other one. And, like, it seems, it seems like they're trying to get everybody to buy every single console if they want to play their games. Everything. I don't know. It's just like Square Enix just really loves to announce video games. Everything is going <laughs> according to plan. Soon everyone will own every console ever. That's, a, me, it's a, that's just, the thing I just really hate about Square Enix. It's like they got. It's like they constantly announce titles, yet they f finish almost none of them. It's like, hey, uh, <laughs> remember Final Fantasy versus thirteen? No, totally not ever. No nope. thing that was announced at the beginning of fi of Final Fantasy III's development and has been delayed for so long that they've now that they're now making it into Final Fantasy fifteen. Yep. I that, swear, that I think thing is it, going to that thing is going to turn out just like Duke Nukem Forever. It's been oh announced God. as vaporware more times than it's been announced. In my opinion. oh yeah, and every single year they just came out with a new trailer. <laughs> that having no game, no Here's gameplay thing. on it. Here's the thing we're working on. Looks cool, doesn't it? Too bad it's not actual gameplay, and it won't be coming out this year. Well, no, they, in E3, didn't they actually um, show and, gameplay? And it actually looked yes, pretty sexy. Yes, finally, it they looked showed really gameplay. good. It looked good, not gonna lie. Oh, uh, yeah, and. <laughs> uh, the why Xbox? Are they, why are they making sequels to Final Fantasy thirteen? Didn't, like, why? everyone. Did, why? Final did Fantasy everyone... thirteen. it was the worst Final Fantasy in the series. It was awful. I think most people agree it on that. It was paced like an ant pushing a brick across a desert. Yes! <laughs> But, like, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, if you get to, like, chapter 20, it actually gets really good. I'm that like, there's, like, 25 chapters! There's, like, 25 chapters! I shouldn't have to, like... You, you know, should never have uh, to work for good... You should never have to work for your fun. It's like, you that's paid a, for that's it That's the thing that people told me. It's like... It's like whenever I said I hated Super Mario Galaxy 2 and I hated Super Mario 3D Land when I said they were too easy and the, the only good levels come on later on because they offer a decent challenge, people said, no, oh, you're just being lazy. You have to work for your fun. <laughs> what? That makes no sense whatsoever. Again, in this society, oh, if not you to mention, for it, you're done. Not to mention that, you know, you actually had to pay for the ending of Final Fantasy 13 2 as DLC. Really? You have to pay for the ending of your game. Horrible. Yes, that was one of the biggest criticisms of the sequel, and that's why I didn't get it. Not to mention, and why are they making 13. a third sequel? Lightning returns. Okay, Lightning is not okay. Look, look. Whoever's writing, whoever's writing this, I don't know who it is, but whoever's writing final, the the final, these Final Fantasy games nowadays, no one likes Lightning as much as you do. Lightning is <laughs> uninteresting as a character to me. No just, sympathy. Ten apathy. was the last good Final Fantasy game they it's made. Like she's, like, only she's, like a, she's like a bland cross between Orin from Final Fantasy X and Cloud from Final Fantasy and the newer Cloud from Final Fantasy VII with none of the interesting backstories. Yeah. Orin was awesome. I loved Orin. Cloud, eh. But she's like, I'm like, why do I care about her? I, there's nothing to care about. Like... Orin had so much to him. He was such a complex character. Cloud had so much to him. He, <laughs> but then I'm like, Lightning, who is she? Why do I care? Fauci, Fault, whatever. I can't pronounce oh, yes. half the Take words. Take a shot for every. Take a shot for every time they say Fauci or Focus <laughs> in the first two hours. <laughs> like, oh. Uh... <laughs> so I, I really think game so I really think game trailers was bribed when they when they got their review for Final Fantasy Thirteen. Do you know what they gave it? An eight point something. It was a four or six. I'm just sitting back enjoying your rage. Yeah. It's just oh, all of it. Dumb. It's not a Final Fantasy game. It's so I haven't played any of them, so I. I I wish I knew what you're talking well, about. Well, you my should, but like not my favorite Final Fantasies. Uh, my favorite Final Fantasies are 4, 6, and 9. I'm going to say 4, 8, and 10. Really? 
10 I'm is my sorry, favorite. I really 10 is one it. of my favorite games in history. I know Josh hates it because he hates Titus, but it's not about the character. It's how he matures. The difference between Titus in the beginning of the story, when he's a bitchy little child and he complains <laughs> about everything, again, and the difference of when me, he's in again, the end, when he's matured. Argument. Let me reiterate a past argument. You should not have to wait for things to get good! Um, well, everything was good because the story was so complex. You had no, 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 Orin no, no, at the no, beginning. No, 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 you no, no, had no, no, Sin. No, 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 no. Titus was not good at the beginning. I could not stand him even speaking. I could. He was bitchy and whiny, but he was a character that I could tolerate. But oh, I it's... have daddy issues. Oh, that then immediately switched to. Ha 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 ha! I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a happy go lucky idiot. Ha ha ha! Oh my daddy issues. Happy go lucky idiot. Daddy issues. Happy go lucky idiot. That was the first half hour uh. of the game, and then you met Waka. You met Yuna. You met Lulu, and everything became really cool. It is laying the foundation in like 20 minutes of the rest of the game and you see him mature. The game is not about a bitchy whiny character. It's about him <laughs> growing through his experiences throughout the story. On that note, Josh, yeah, don't read Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> no because it takes time, you know, and you watch a character mature. Something you might have been mentioning, Misha? No, it's like I don't mind a character maturing. It's like it's like let, let me tell let me give an example. The Prince of Persia. It's like at the beginning of the Ooh. game at Prince of Persia Sands of Time. At the beginning yes. of the game, he was um he was arrogant. He was he was arrogant, but he was funny he was funny arrogant. He was complete he was very emotionally clueless. Which which I thought which I, which I thought had a lot of charm to his character, and slowly over time he starts succumbing to his emo I saw that he starts his there. emotional side, and he said he starts opening up trusting he starts opening up trusting people. It's that's admittedly it helps when he gets a lot better at killing things, but yeah, <laughs> it's like when, it's like when a character it's like. But I don't mind is, the maturing of a difference? character. I don't mind when that's, a character develops. But that's it's a just different that, type of maturity. In that, like, <clears throat> he he's growing up from a kid instead of growing from an ignorant, arrogant asshole into a, a, a kind, relatable character, or not exactly kind, but more reasonable. It's a different type of maturity. It's just, you might hate um, people that are immature in the sense that they are like a kid inside, but you really, they, they need to lay the foundation of how he is so that they can show you how he changes throughout the story. That's why the entire, the, the scene is one of the most infamous scenes when they start laughing and they force it out really, really horribly. It's not that they're making awful laughing, it's because they, you, you finally start to realize that they're growing. I'm the, sorry, when that scene was playing, I wasn't thinking, oh, this is very compelling. I'm seeing hearing them growing as a character. I'm I see them growing as characters. What I was thinking during that scene was my ears <laughs> uh, I, I I feel for you, Josh. I I do. But again, yeah. I have I have very limited experience to the Final Fantasy franchise. So And not to mention, I like how they did Aeons in Final Fantasy X. I really really hate when you're like i'm gonna summon the most badass thing ever and then it comes smacks them in the face and then goes away no if you, i summon this giant badass creature that bitch is gonna fight for me <laughs> that bitch oh, is gonna hit them it's 10, gonna take the on. hits please tell me you cannot defend that final boss please tell I me i don't care you yvonne that you okay well technically you yevon is kind of the final boss but not actually technically Jacked is the final boss. Oh, spoiler alert! Oh! Oh! oh. Low blow. Well, guess what? You find out in the story. Whatever. Well, However, I mean, honestly, it's, su it's such an old the, game at this point. Yeah, if you haven't played it, like, 12 years after, then you don't deserve the right to have a spoiler warning. So okay, well, I've been duly notified after my spoiler that I don't deserve a spoiler warning. <laughs> <laughs> so my, my favorite Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy VI. I've never played six. Oh, it's oh, it's really good. Um, 
I played it's a, three. It's, it's a, I can pretty much I can pretty much sum up the entire game in one sentence. Yeah. There's a guy who wants to blow up the world because he's an a-hole. Because he's that an sounds asshole. like most JRPGs. No, he, he's a he's an a-hole because it's fun for him. Because so no real motivation other than it sounds like it would be fun to blow up. You know the world. what Tweak would do? Okay. To well, that. that's a, well, that's kind of how it starts. It's like the villain. It starts because it's just fun for him. Later, it sort of develops into like this really kind of frightening nihilism. Okay. It's like he, he, Any it's reason like he, for it? Like, Any motivation well, yeah, behind well, it? Yeah. Well, yeah, there is a motivation. It's like this character. It's like halfway through the game. Uh, I don't want to say spoiler warning. Uh, halfway through the game, he gains ulti he gains ultimate power and pretty much destroys the world. He quite literally destroys the world. Apocalypse happens throughout the game. Apocalypse happens in the game. The entire world map is changed halfway through the game, and uh, he. So yeah, he is now God. He is pre he is pretty much God, and he just sits on his th on his high tower, just smiting people. Just, just smiting people who are trying to survive, and he's just having a really good time doing it. So, does he smite you if you swear, like, oh, whatever his name is, damn it, and lightning Kef. falls from the sky? No, he just smites people <laughs> indiscriminately, from what I'm gathering here. Uh, well, yeah, and then, and then once you find, once you finally confront him, it's like you, you finally start to see where his tra where his train of thought is gone. He's like, why do people insist on creating things? when it will be inevitably be destroyed. Why do people insist on clinging to life when they know they have to die? It's it doesn't make any it doesn't make any sense to me. The only joy, the only the only joys I can find in life is from killing and destruction. Huh. He sounds like a 3-year-old. He does. <laughs> well, he has a well, he has a well, he has a well, he is a clown, so oh, I see why you like him now. But for <laughs> but for you that is and, that, and then the thing, and then the thing is, when they, when all the party tries to prove to him, it's like there are things worth living for other than destruction. And then he just says, and then, then when they give them all the reasons, like going through like different types of love, friendship, companionship, uh, for, forging bonds, it's like he, what, what he says is, you all sound like chapters from a self-help booklet. <laughs> well, come on, he can't be a real nihilist because we all know and real then, nihilists what, then what he kill himself. And then, and then, uh, and then the real the real nihilism comes in is when is during his final battle when his final battle like sort of gives a symbolic reenactment of Dante's Inferno in which Dante travels through hell, purgatory, and heaven and meeting God where he's where where God tells Dante the meaning of life. It kind of start it kind of it start it's a four phase battle where you start out in a symbolic hell, and then and then after you beat that form you move up to a symbolic purgatory, and. And then, right, and then after you beat that, you move up to a symbolic heaven where that the form is Michelangelo's Pieta, but instead of Jesus there, it's Kefka. Okay, I don't want to be a jerk, but Dante's Inferno was only the first part of the Divine Comedy. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. The meaning is still there. Yeah, and then the fourth form is where is where is where uh, the fourth form is where Kefka uh, takes the form of. A set of a six-winged angel, and then what? And then this is supposed to be a, this is supposed to be a allude to Dante's Inferno, where, where, and where in that story where God tells Dante the meaning of life, Kefka tells, the Kefka tells the party that life is meaningless and he's going to destroy it all because he wants to, it's like if he destroys it all, he's going to prove that it's meaningless. Huh. I I guess. Um, well, that would give me a good incentive to tear his head off. Yeah, I, yeah, that would definitely. But yeah, Kefka was a really effed up villain. <laughs> apparently, you know, maybe just a oh, yeah, little. The first, uh, yeah, the first, yeah, uh, the first, the first time you meet him, he's just walking through a desert, and it, and it, he's walking through a desert, and he's whining, and then he just turns to his two guards, is like, "Clean my boots off. There's sand on them, even though we're in a desert. Clean my boots. There's sand on them." <laughs> and the, and what's funny is that they do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next time the next time you see him, uh he poisons the water supply of a town and yeah, you see you see people drop dead and one of the main characters has to pull his dead child out of bed. That's awful. 
That yeah, is Yeah, it's like, it's like when I was playing this, I'm like, am I playing a Final Fantasy game? Am I playing a Nintendo game? It's like, the video games really don't go this dark anymore. And that's why I love Final they Fantasy don't. VI. It takes risks. It, it even, de even dealt with, uh, with suicide. It's like after it's like after the world is destroyed. Uh, cat, uh, one of the main characters. It's that one of the main characters. She tries to nurse one of her friends back to health, but she fit, but she fails, and then she realizes, it, and then she just thinks that she doesn't have anything worth living for, and she just throws herself off a cliff. Yay! Yay! Nintendo, everybody, full of sunshine, happy lands, and attempted suicide. Yeah, that's a thing. <laughs> That's a thing, right? <laughs> so, are we talking more about Final Fantasy, or are we going on with the rest of E3? Well, we can do that. We can do that, indeed. So, the X Bone failing miserably. The X Bone. <laughs> the Xbox One. The X Bone failing miserably. No. Okay, in my I opinion. Think I, I th okay, I think I want to tout my battle cry out for this. For the, for this, four is greater than one. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Oh, man. Yeah, Xbox, uh, the, the X-Bone apparently going to be riddled with all sorts of limitations and DRM. DRM. And, and it's just... like, no used games. Uh, if you want to play used, if you want to buy used games, you have to pay a fee. Uh, no backwards compatibility. Now, one of my friends actually explained to me why they can't do back backwards compatibility. It's a processor. It's a processor. Yeah, no, issue. Yes, it's okay. So, from an IT perspective, the reason that it's like the, that they can't do backwards compatibility, and where they've could done it in the past, for example, things like the PS2. So, the reason why the PS3 was originally backwards compatible with the PS2 is because Sony had designed the hardware, like the actual processor, in-house. And they designed with backwards compatibility specifically in mind because it was such a huge success with the PS2. The reason they got rid of it is because the laser for the laser that reads the disc on the PS3 cannot read a DVD. So they had to include a separate laser. That cost a lot of money to make, and the PS3 was already so expensive to make, they were losing too much money, and they were going under. And they said... They, they brought somebody in that said, okay, please do something with the PS3 that'll make us stop losing so much money. And the first thing he did was said, well, you have to get rid of back, backwards compatibility. That's when they got rid of it. PS2 could do it because the PS2 could read CDs. The PS1 used CDs. Both had similar chipsets in them, so it was very easy to do. The PS4 has a completely different architecture. The PS4 and the X-Bone both use PC hardware in them. So one, wow, you're going to get much better... Up. So, yes, you're going to get much better ports because they're designed for that hardware in the first place. However, the downside is no backwards compatibility because it's not designed with the uh, previous generation games in mind. Yeah, no, actually, that was one thing that was uh, really a big thing with previous generation consoles was so much of the hardware was designed in-house by the companies. So it wasn't like standard, you know, chipsets. It wasn't standard processors or video cards or any of that. So yeah, do they make their own data sheets for that kind of stuff or is that just in company only? What do you mean data sheets? All right, well when when you build a circuit like that or the inside of the computer for that matter, you you have to have a full tab list of all the parts, the integrated chipsets and everything else like that that you're using and then you then the assembly and all that. And normally that all has to be documented. I doubt they'd publish that. They if they because... do they haven't published it. They've published specs and um, the types of cards they're using. For example, both of them are using AMD processors. Um, and I can both... approve of that. That's going to make them cheaper. Yes. Um, Intel is AMD... horribly overpriced. Well, well, no, not AMD, overpriced, but... AMD makes really good low to mid-range hardware. You'll get a much better price to performance ratio with lower end uh, with AMD on low to mid-range hardware. But it's if just... you want like a quad-core hyper-threaded or like an eight-core processor... Well, yeah, well... And if you want a very high-end processor, you're better off going with Intel. You're, you'll get more bang for your buck. But low to mid-range AMD has a monopoly on that. I would never recommend a low to mid-range... Um, Intel? Intel over Nor would AMD. I. But I'm an enthusiast gamer. I have a $3,000 rig. I don't have any AMD parts in my machine. Probably and I'm will. kind of a hobbyist. My my new processor was maybe 120, and this was a 3.8 gigahertz quad-core. It's AMD, and it works great. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it'll work great. Um, however, going back to the original point, that they have AMD hardware, which really helps them make a better product for a cheaper... Reasonable. Yeah. For a reasonable price. And $400, I think it was, for the uh, PS4, that is a great price point. I agree with it Wasn't entirely. Wasn't the PS3 yeah. more expensive than that? Initially? PS3 was 599 US dollars. 599 US dollars. Giant enemy crab. Yes, yeah. it was six hundred dollars on release, but that was because they had developed all the technology in house, which is also why it R and D so much better. Anyone in the government yeah. understands R and D costs, really, especially the Air Force um, when we buy new planes. Yes. Oh my <laughs> God, the Air Force and your freaking research and development. We oh love planes, God. okay? We like to go uh, zoom zoom of, through oh, yeah, sky. Speaking of which, uh, Xbox Xbox One is not going to. Um, you're going to have to connect to the internet once every 24 hours. 24 hours, otherwise Microsoft is going to brick your system. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you don't have, if it doesn't authenticate with its servers, once every 24 hours, your console will not play any games. They said you'll still be allowed to watch TV and watch DVDs and Blu-ray, but that's it. No gaming. No cable. Or no, I'm sorry. You will have cable. Ah. Um, but no functionality that the console itself is specific for. See, like I, a gaming console. See, I right. don't see the point in that 100%. I mean, that just seems like overkill. Well, okay, so the, the, the reason they've done all this is because they have the, the... It's all stemming off of them trying to get rid of used games. They are saying, oh, look, the developers are losing a lot of money because people are just reselling games and letting their friends play them. And the way they see it, they are losing sales. Well, maybe, so they, you know, hold on, the, hold know, on, if hold developers on, hold would on. actually make better games, I, I we wouldn't this. sell them. Hold on. This is their perspective, not mine, preaching to the choir. So, continuing. So what they did is they say, okay, well, how can we enforce that? Well, we can, you know, register, we can have them register an authentication key that is specific to each disk. So how, well, what are they going to do? Because, they, well, if we implement that, people can just modify the hardware. Uh, they can, like, crack it, um, hack the... Jailbreak or whatever the you want to call it. Right, call jailbreak it, it whatever. Um, the and X-bone. then they can get around that. So they say, okay, well, how can we prevent that? And they said, well, we can have it authenticate with the servers um, so that we can basically determine if it is um, hacked. That's where we get that from. Yeah, but, you know, developers won't be losing so much money if X, you know, if Microsoft didn't charge them to put up DLC. Because, yeah. Yes. Their and patches cost me. a lot of money. Yep. It's not beyond most program a, a decent programmer to go ahead and spoof the Xbox into accepting oh, it's been verified for this day. It, oh yeah, I guarantee you it's going it to be honestly hacked take with, about half an hour. I guarantee you it'll be hacked within a week of its released. Guarantee it. Because it's not gonna work. They're they're gamers Microsoft is going out into doing this, people are going to set out to specifically break their console. Oh yeah, no, I was just gonna say gamers are some of the most Determined and vindictive people you are ev- you will ever meet Try if you hearts. piss them off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, yes. This also reminds me of something that a that a Microsoft exec said. It's um, if you don't have if you don't have a stable internet, don't buy an Xbox One. Buy an Xbox 360. Yep. Wow. Well, or, I guess that's what my know, folks are keeping. What he, what he should have said is, if you don't have a consistent internet connection, don't buy an Xbox and buy a PS4. Oh, yep. Oh. Exactly. I agree. Or, right. you know... Yeah, he, uh, yeah, I think the exec actually mentioned something about someone emailing him saying he was on a nuclear submarine. Wow. Yep. You know, my yep. response to that is people should just come over to the dark side and... Um, Join us. PC game. PC <laughs> gamers. <laughs> oh, I was well, going yeah, to well, say Air Force, but... <laughs> well, the thing is, I... If ever there is a game that is released for consoles and the PC, I buy the PC version. However, in the in reality world, there are exclusives to consoles, and yes. that's why I buy one console. I will not Kingdom buy a 360. Hearts 3. Yes, 
and Final Fantasy, and God of War, if you are into that, and Dynasty Warriors and all that fun stuff. Oh, Dynasty Warriors, my guilty pleasure. Dynasty Warriors. Yes. So, <laughs> with all that, I usually get one I'll console, and I'll just play it for the exclusives. Yeah, which I, is I going to be the that. PS4. Because I have a Vita, and I was pleasantly surprised when they announced how great the, the compatibility between the Vita and the PS4 was going to be. I suspected it because, you know, they're, the P Vita is struggling a little bit. And a I understand. <laughs> well, it's actually not as bad as you think. It's not nearly as bad as you think. Um, right. But people keep thinking it's because, oh, well, why would I play on a Vita when I can play, you know, Angry Birds on my, on my uh, iPhone? Well, clearly, people in the world want to play a little bit more than Angry Birds. The Vita has significantly better hardware in it than an iPhone. The yes, hardware now why is... can't they take advantage of it? They are. There's what actually a few games. I, I, again, I do agree there aren't that many titles. However, I was very impressed when they said that they were going to move to make games downloadable. Like, if you purchase a PS4 game, you can download it onto your Vita and you can play it on the go on your Vita. That sounds freaking awesome. I am totally looking for that. Can't yes. Wait. Oh yes. Uh, another thing about the Xbox One, uh, you cannot turn the connect off. Really? That is a big, big brother issue. is watching. Always watching. Well, theoretically, you could just unplug it, couldn't you? Nope. You have no. Nope, you have to keep it on. It you will not turn on. It will not turn on without the connect. There is no power button on the Xbox One. I can't play video on. games in my underwear anymore? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Hal is becoming Hal. a reality. Hal. Uh, old references that oh, maybe man. some younger people won't get. I'm surprised oh. I get it. With yeah, all uh, that. So, yeah, I came up with this uh, great joke. Oh, well, I didn't really come up with it. I'm I basically stole it from someone else. Um, you know the uh, the new Xbox? Yes. I'm going to buy one. No! Ha, 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 ha. Yeah, ha. I'm sorry. This, this looks like the end of my loyal Xbox. What what would I call that? Followership? I had one of the first gen ones, one of the 360s. And it's like, well, if I don't become a PC gamer. Stop trying to convert me, Spangle. Um, uh, you will. Steve. You will turn to the dark side. Um, I, I may Steam very well be getting a PS4. Steam will be your lord and master. You will be assimilated. But, yeah, honestly, I think... 90% off daily deals. You just can't touch that. No, you cannot. Um, honestly, though, I think Xbox, you know, has kind of, at least in this Ooh, moment of time... Franchise? Weekend deals, 66% off. <laughs> Looking at Steam, are we? Um, I think Xbox at this point in time is losing the console war. Honestly, um, it is going to lose, and it is going to lose hard Do because you think the entire internet is against it right now. The entire internet is not. You never want the entire internet against you ever. Like it seems like what, what's going that's on. The entire is... internet is against them, and okay, yeah, that's that demographic out. So what's that? What's left to to market to the casuals? Well, uh, the, um, my okay, parents. in this but okay in this economy is... in this day, it's like how are you going to convince a person to buy a five hundred dollar machine that does things that a smart TV can do but better, or, or my laptop. computer can do but better. Yeah, no, Xbox, I, I, I'm wondering if they're going to be able to recover from this, depending on how hard this well, hits them. Well, here is the, the thing. Microsoft, ever since um, Bill Gates left, has seemed to have delusion, had delusioned itself to believe that everything it puts out, like, it's delusion. Well, no, yeah. no, no it's not, not disillusioned. Let, right. let him finish. Delusions of grandeur. It's so, delusions of grandeur, yeah, oh yeah, sure, okay. Um, to believe that it shit doesn't stink. So anytime it puts out something that is awful, it's like, yeah, when, well, it's great. Windows Everyone 8. loves it. Yeah, Windows 8. It is still touting off Windows 8 as if it's a success, but the numbers speak quite otherwise. I'm still running so, Windows 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah Windows so 7 all the way. I'm not going Windows to have great. Windows 8. Windows 7 is functional. It does what I need it to do. Anything else, I have Linux. So, Damn. 
Hardcore. Right. So between, you know, <laughs> a functional operating system in Linux, I get everything that I need. Why do I need Windows 8? It has a stupid freaking ugly ass UI. It has less functionality than it did in Windows 7, which is still limited in its functionality. Why do I want it? I'll wait. I don't. Because, especially since I'll have to pay money for it, I'm not. Yeah, I'm just looking at this Xbox One. It's, it's the PS3 all over again. It's just those stupid decisions fueled by hubris. Yep. I think that's an accurate statement. I think that's definitely... Oh, man. Xbox is failing hard. And that's all there is to it. Oh, yeah. So, okay, off the subject of uh, Nint of Microsoft and Sony, let's move on to Nintendo. Yay! Which hasn't been relevant to my life in years. Because um, they keep doing everything wrong. You have no Ever since I stopped playing Pokemon. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The GameCube is one of my favorite systems of all time. It's yeah. probably number two on my list. PS2 was the greatest system. GameCube was second. They did everything right with the GameCube. They f did everything wrong with the Wii, and they did almost everything wrong uh, with the Wii U. Uh, so why am I going to get either of those two? I'm not. Smash Brothers? Smash Brothers. Um, I don't play it. Brawl was not that good at all. But I played, no, it was I it. disagree. Mega Man! I'm going to stay out of this one. Mega so Man! I'm talking about we don't Brawl. like you anyway. Mega Man, Mega Man! They're the cold hammer shot off! <laughs> <laughs> they swing your mighty hammer. No. <laughs> Ice climbers can suck a dick! <laughs> but <Beep>. got you! <laughs> I fucking hate the Ice climbers, man. Such but, a cheap... But mm. I just did not really like Brawl that much at all. But they're just... Uh, I liked Ike because he was the cheap. <laughs> yes, Ike. I love Ike. You just pick him and then you go wail on people. And it was it was like the most joyous experience ever because it took very little effort to just go in there and wreck someone. And, yeah, actually, um, Ike is mid-low tier. Yeah, I would say so. But if you had an experienced Brawl player and they knew how to use Ice Climbers, they would wreck your shit. They if they had would. anyone using Meta Knight, they'd wreck your... <laughs> that too. And there were some characters in that game that, in the hands of an experienced Brawl player, you stood no chance against. At all. So, yeah, that was fun but, when I found out some of my friends were a little bit too good at that game, and I lost all interest. It's just, I didn't see the appeal to it. Brawl, one of my favorite games ever. I played Brawl so much... Loved it. Played Brawl... Uh, wait, I said you Melee. You mean Melee. Met Melee. I met he Melee. Met, I, I know you meant Melee, but um, good that you clarified. So, so playing Brawl, I was like, uh, That... It and was good enough. And the problem with the Wii U is how they were touting that the hardware was actually good and that they this console was, not go, was going to be left out of fewer exclusives due to hardware limitations. Well, what they meant was... Their next generation console was going to be left out of the um ex the console uh, out of yeah their next generation console would be left out of fewer game uh out of fewer releases than the previous generation from Microsoft and Sony. The hardware of the Wii U compared to the hardware of the PS4 and the Xbone is so significantly massive that there's no way they're going to be able to make anything even functional on the Wii U. Um, I'm going to have to heavily disagree with you there because let me history me says specs. otherwise. Give us some specs. What's what's the difference in processor power and vid graphics? And no, RAM no, no. Bump? Here's the thing. What I'm trying to put forth here is that that doesn't matter because the because history tells us that the actually the slowest console the the console that was the weakest was always that was always the better one i mean look at the better look at the ps2 at. The, in, ter the in terms PS2? of sales and in terms of games it's a, let, let's look at the ps2 area the ps2 was the weakest graph was the weakest graphically it was the weakest in terms of power um, when compared to the gamecube and compared to the xbox um having trouble with that one i don't think so Pretty sure it was a GameCube. I was a GameCube. It's like the PS2 was the least powerful out of them all, and look, and 
it it was a it was a it was a massive success. I mean, look at the look at the previous generation. Look at the Wii, Xbox 360, and PlayStation 3. The Wii was using last generation technology, but it, it was sold a GameCube. So freaking well. The Wii was a GameCube, just slightly modified. And it sold to an entirely different audience. My overweight aunt uses it for Wii Fit. She doesn't play Call of Duty, you know. Well, yeah, I have an Xbox Nintendo, 360 for Call of Duty. Nintendo, oh my, I, Nintendo pulled a fast one on everyone, and it worked out great for them. It really did. Here's so a new I, console. I, I still like playing. I still like playing games. It's like I still like my. I still like my Super Smash Brothers Brawl. I still like my No More Heroes. It's a. I still like Mad World. Yeah. So I mean, honestly, it, like I said, I think GameCube or, like, or Metro or the Metroid Pri or the Metro or the Metroid Prime trilogy. Oh, the awesome. trilogy! I have been trying to get my hands on that game forever. It's just not available anywhere. Neener, neener. I hate you. Can I borrow it sometime? Maybe, please. Please? Call me if you're good. Okay, I'll be good. <laughs> Spangle, no. <laughs> He's my boss anyway. Tech, well, yeah, so, yeah, and I'm probably one of the few people that actually enjoyed playing other M. Oh, Dizzy would hate you so much. No, 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 no. Here's the thing. I hate the story. Let me get. Okay. Let me make that very clear. I hate the story. I think it's a huge disservice to Samus as a character. Okay. But you have redeemed yourself somewhat. But the gameplay, and, and, and there's all, and there's also that whole like mother symbolism that's co that's pretentiously shoved down your throat. But the gameplay but is good. Is the gameplay is freaking awesome. Okay, and it, it's a uh, Metroid Other M would would honestly be one of my favorite games if you could only skip the cutscenes. If you could skip the cutscenes, <clears throat> so don't play that, it for that, the story. That, play that, it for the gameplay. That's kind of a that was kind that's kind okay. of a deal breaker for me. So, it's like the thing is about Kingdom Hearts 2, it's like, I love the gameplay, I think the story is atrocious, but thank goodness they allowed me to skip the cutscenes. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mache, we've derailed successfully, apparently. Again. Hold on one second. So, the hardware of the Wii U, it has two gigs of RAM. Both of the next generation consoles have eight. Is this the, DDR2 or DDR3? Yeah, that there's is a DDR3. Difference. DDR3. Okay. DDR3. Uh, two gigs is still very limiting. I would say, at a minimum, for anything heavy gaming wise, it has to have six at a minimum. It has a th three core processor, and I think they said that one of those processors is uh, exclusive to the hardware, uh, to the actual console itself. So, so you mean dedicated to something other than yes, game running. Um, I can't find anything uh, specific about that, so I'm going to assume no. But it's clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. Yeesh. Yeah. The um the I think it was either the X Bone or the PS4 had well both of them have eight gigs of RAM, and the PS4 has I think uh, D, uh, DDR5. Five. Five. What? Or it was GDDR, which would be graphical, which would be less impressive, significantly less impressive. It's probably what I'm talking about. Probably. I'm a little tired. So, uh, and one of them actually has an 8-core processor. Which, which one is AMD. this? Uh, one second. Is it the 4 or the X-Bone? Uh, one second. Please let it be the PS4. <laughs> Silent. Well. Just hoping. Well, the number of cores doesn't mean as much as um, no, yeah, the... I'm Unless you're doing uh, on, a mathematical equation that you can reduce to something that you can do with But I don't those care parts. about your specifications. I only care about the games. I am interested in Sonic Lost World. I am interested in Bayonetta 2. I am interested in Pikmin 3. I am interested in Mario Kart 8. I am interested in Donkey Kong Country. And I'm interested in that game called The Wonderful 101, I think it was. Yeah, that game yes, was the, really, really cool. The PS4 has an 8-core processor. Claus Say that! And it the, means it's going to render the hell out of anything really quick. But other than that, it's not well, all that great no, for anything. That would, no, that would mean that it can process a lot of... Um, Let me... Uh, actions, not actions, freaking... It's finite element analysis is what multiple core processors are really good at. So, Dynasty Warriors on steroids? <laughs> yes, it would be really good at Dynasty Warriors. Things with lots of moving parts. Rendering things. Was that a squee? 
Yes. Yes, that, yes. that was. A so it, it would be yes, really I'm good. Yes, I'm a Dynasty at, Warriors fanboy. It would be really good at running a lot of processes at once. And the graphics card, which is basically the equivalent of a 560, which is pretty damn good on a console, is significantly better than the Wii U. What, is, what does the Wii U have? What does it have? Um, AMD Radeon HD codename Latte. So I'm guessing it was built specifically for the Wii U. So it doesn't awesome. have memory size? Uh, it says clocked at 550 megahertz. Ram. I don't see it. I don't see it. Okay. Nope. Huh. Nope. But um, Not a only one gig of its two gigs of RAM is res is uh, allowed to be used by games. So technically, wow. it only has what? one gig. Who programs Techn this? That that's, is the Wii U. That's why I was saying the that's low specs. specs. The specs Very low. for the Wii U are so have the the specs for the Wii U compared to everything else. There's never been a as great of a hardware difference. It is the hardware for the Wii U is about one fourth to one fifth as powerful as a PS4 and an Xbox, and they're selling it for almost the same exact price. Sorry, go not. Nintendo. Wait, go Nintendo. Way it, to have uh, the going ads. Uh, that takes a, a Wii lot U of balls. A, a Wii U is three hundred dollars. The PS4 is four hundred. Why would I want a Wii U to play, you know, Mario Galaxy, which I don't even really think is that great of a game? Or I like you know, Galaxy yeah. One. I hate Galaxy Two. So unless they actually came out with some good games, which I've yet to see. I don't see I named you a couple, like, Wii. right off the bat. Which ones? Well, the ones that were shown at E3 were, um, it was, uh, Sonic Lost World. Um, that sounds good. Yeah, it's, uh, um, Bayonetta 2. Is that exclusive? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> now I and have to buy the Wii U. The only reason that Bayonetta 2 was exclusive was that Nintendo was the only company that showed interest in giving that franchise a second chance. Really? What do you mean a second chance? The first Bayonetta was amazing. No one else wanted it. What do you mean nobody wanted it? It was amazing. The no game company wanted it. Was so good. The game companies apparently don't think so. Gamers, on the other hand, seem to have a vastly so different opinion. It was so good. And there's all, and there's Pik there's Pikmin three, the next Donkey oh, Kong Country. Oh, I really, really need to buy a Wii U now. Wii U. And there's also the wonderful me. 101. And there's even games. Uh. Out, and there's even games out that I think are good. That I think are good. There's a. Uh, okay, I think I like Zombie U. Okay, I like Zombie U. It's a it's a really it's a really good return to survival horror that you don't see a lot nowadays. There's like a lot of a lot. A lot of survival horror games nowadays are just stupid co-op action-y explosions. Running Resident gun. Evil 6. Resident Evil 6, Dead Space 3. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Bad games are bad. Well, I don't, I don't well, not really bad. It's not like, bad. I enjoy, but... I enjoy Dead Space 3 as an action game, but not as part, a of, part of me inside was silently weeping. Yeah, no, I, I understand what you're saying. I really do. Oh, it's like it's like Dead Space was fu was great. The first Dead Space was great, but then Dead Space Two came along and had to and then had to uh, action things <laughs> but up. But the the oh lord, I, I disagree with how poorly the games are ported to the mm. PC. I'm so happy that the next generation console is coming out because then everything will be so much easier to port because it'll be so much easier for the developers. Yes. And look oh yeah, amazing. I, have a, I have this weird theory about the um. I know, I know, I know. I'm really thinking far ahead here, but I have this theory about the next generation of consoles that they're gonna come with replaceable part with re, with replaceable Ooh, parts. I'm gonna take them all apart I don't and fix all of them. I don't think they're ever <laughs> going to do that. I now I honestly believe that they're not going to do that because. The reason a lot of people get a console is because they don't want to have to be concerned with specs. They don't want to have to be concerned with replacing modules or anything like that. They want to open it, take it, take it out of the box, plug it into an outlet, plug it into your TV, and they want to turn it on and play. And that is why people get a console. If they, do, if they yeah. want something like that, they get a PC because then they get much better 
they get better games out of it. Right. If you oh, it's interchange just hardware, fun to work on it. And then what you're going to get is you're going to get developers that are going to start developing games that say, oh, requires this module added on. And it's just going to oh, add yeah, more to the, the cost. N64 did that. Oh, and yes, the N64. It's, it's had going to, to be uh, really unpopular if they do that. I don't think they're ever going to do that. I remember that, doing that for Majora's Mask is getting that little special. Yeah. Well, Majora's Mask is my favorite Zelda, so screw you. No, I loved Majora's Mask, but you had to buy that extra part to you know replace that one well, part. Well, I didn't your... buy the extra part. It came bundled with Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! But yeah, no, I don't see them ever doing that, honestly. They they might, but I, I'm more inclined to agree with Mache on this topic. So, yeah. Josh, you're outnumbered. Sorry. Yeah. I'm not doing it on purpose. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> totally Baby, on purpose. You're right. <laughs> totally <laughs> on purpose. But, but I mean, like, I'm still going to take so, them apart. So, anything else from E3 that stuck out to you guys? Uh, what was it? What? Was... Some stuff. Hold on. Stuff. Hold on. I got this. I'll talk. Stuffses. I'll, I'll talk. Uh, Dead Rise at Dead Rising Three. I Meh. as as much as the concept interests me, I've never played either Dead Rising. Neither have I. In no particular reason either. I just haven't. Time. No, I saw Dead Rising. I saw Dead Rising three, and I'm like, really? They're really going this route? It's a Dead Rising is supposed to be about having fun with zombies. Yes, it is. I've noticed. I've not played, but it's I've like seen Dead other Rising people 2, play. Dead Rising two was freaking hilarious. I got. It's a. I'm gonna. I'm gonna dress. I'm gonna cross dress and run and run over zombies on a tricycle. I feel like Dead Rising was kind of meant to poke fun at the other zombie games. I feel like it, that's why it they kind made of it. It, it kind of it, it kind of is. Dead Rising 2 was hilarious. The first Dead Rising was hilarious. It was all hilarious what you what you were forced to do in those games. And Dead Rising 3, it's ugh, the developers Horrible. came out and said, and I quote, we're trying to make the game more like Call of Duty. We're trying to appeal uh, to the Call of Duty audience. Call of Duty uh. is for Call of Duty and don't try and muscle in on us. Yeah, it's like yeah, it, it's like hey guys, do you know what those Call of Duty players are going to be doing when Dead Rising Three year comes out? They're Play gonna be Call, Call of Duty. Duty. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they're not going to pay attention to this copycat. because I need my quick scopes trick shot or 360 montage, and if I don't get this, I won't be awesome on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that's what everybody does on that game. They're not going to be dissuaded from it. Nope. Uh, not at all. Um. Also, you know, this wasn't announced at E3, but they they finally gave us a, a a view of the campaign, and I am personally looking forward to this like no other. Total War Rome 2. Oh lord. Oh, oh I can't I wait that. until that game comes out. I have played every single room, uh, Total War game since Medieval. The first one, and oh, I'm a huge fan. Hardcore. Yeah, when, I saw, when I saw that game get announced, I'm like, wow, I personally don't care, but that is cool. I personally don't care about the game, but I know a lot of people who are going to be happy with oh, that announcement. I am fanboying. I can't wait to so play hard. That. See, I recently, Rome Total the War was on sale on Steam for $1, just like not too long ago. Oh, and so I bought it. it. I bought yeah, it. Yeah, it's... Oh, Wait, yeah. you speaking should of, have oh, yeah. got speaking it. You don't very have old it right games now. That are recently getting speaking of very old games that are getting re-released. Star Wars Battlefront. <gasps> oh, yes. I can't wait. Please. I will kill you all. I can't wait. Oh my god, yes. Oh my god. I will kill you all with my jet trooper. <laughs> you Oh, mm, and it's, it's Droidica. in the hand of Dice. I can't Is I'm it? so happy. Yes, Dice has it. Oh. Yes. So I as am a very happy individual. As long as they don't as long as they don't take Battlefield 4 and slap Star Wars on it, I'll be fine. I don't think they're going to do that. DICE has not fucked up. I don't think they're going to do it with Star Wars. Would you rather it be in the hands of DICE or Activision? Luke, LucasArts <laughs> or Activision? Yeah, no. Um, I would rather have would DICE you, on it. Would you be mad at me if I said I wouldn't mind? I would hurt you. Mm, I wouldn't Come mind. at me, Misha. I will end you. <laughs> Thing is, I kind of really, really like the Call of Duty games. I do. Well, no, you mm. are an awful person. All right, I'm an awful person. I, I'm totally fine is, with that. 
I'm a battlefield guy. Honestly, all the way. it comes down to I I think Dice has the capability of it, capabilities of it, and I really hope they do make it. As like, long as they don't you know, try to shove the frostbite too. engine down my throat, I'll be good. Oh, I totally want the frostbite engine. I, I want to see shit. The thing is, I like the frostbite engine. I, I think it makes games look very pretty. I just I just hate when they. Say, oh hey, look at this falling building. Look at how many individual pieces we're rendering. Look at look at all this I, stuff. Yeah, we worked very I, hard on this. Can you see? Can you see it? Can you see every little thing we're doing? We worked very hard on this. Okay. We're taking our focus away <laughs> from the rest of the game, and we're gonna make you focus on this. That's scenery. not Josh. That focus. So hard. Josh. Huh. I am That's a fanboy for destructible environments. That. Destructible I environment is love awesome. Destructible environments. I cream myself every time. <laughs> I can take TMI. A, stop. TMI. I can take a tank and then I can blow up a building. Someone is inside because in real life, a wall does not stop a tank round. Nope. I blow it up and then I kill him. Yes. I love destructible environments. I love saying, oh, look, the entire enemy team is chilling in that building. Well, instead of, you know, shooting it, I'll just blow up the entire building. You know, there's something really <laughs> magical about room clearing a building, okay? Some of us get a huge thrill out of that. I yes. would rather I would rather clear the entire room by <laughs> leveling it. Screw the screw clearing a building. I just love delete the building from the map. Just yes. So you're, con so you're, so you're compensating for something with your big tank instead of relying on your own natural abilities of intelligence like and close option. quarters combat? I like, I like the option the to have option. a big ass tank. Because I don't like when I can just sit on top of a building and snipe people all the time. And then anytime somebody oh, looks I at hate me. sniping. And then anytime someone looks at me, I just say, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, take one step back and then can be completely See? out of the line of fire. I like say, oh, look, this guy's on top of the building. I can't shoot him. So you know what? I know he's bye there bye building. and he's doing cheap tactics. So I'm just going to blow out the building from under him. And this is what I'd like to say. How often are you going to be the tank driver? And just looking at the real life stuff, because if we're going for realistic, here, I'm not we going, aren't going for realism. For realism. There, we are a not. It's between realism and having an accurate portrayal of war. Being really? able to destroy a building, as opposed to not being able to destroy a building, is more realistic. So I would like to put the of arguments realism. that realism there, is not always better for games. No, I agree. There, uh, I agreed. like, there I is agree, a balance. however, I like destruction. I like Me being too. able to blow up a building oh, I if I want to. I like destruction I of people it. more, though. I but don't you get like Call of Duty of because I believe all it is is just the different maps with the same guns, whereas with, like... Different open spaces me, with the same me, guns and tanks. Let me retract that. You have different environments, but they all function the same. When you can dynamically change Chained. a battle yes. with explosions, it creates a more tactical change the of face fighting. of the map where the cover is etc yeah i agree i'm if somebody on board is with chilling the in a bunker being a dick killing your entire team i don't want to have to find a way to rush in there and risk dying i should have the option of saying i'm just going to take my giant rocket launcher and i am going to send it through the window you and know. blow up the oh, entire but building the fun in that that's, and there, that's you're missing the point. That's you're always missing an option in Call of Duty, you know? I could pull out my rocket launcher, and if I'm good enough shot, I can plunk it right through the window and hit him. But see, I can well, use I can both rounds on my wall, sniper rifle. Or I can blow up the wall and just rain bullets into that room. But you know what? It, the thing is, Mache is putting a huge emphasis on the destruction, but that doesn't always happen either. There are plenty of close quarter combat engagements where things aren't blowing up all around you, and yeah, you do have that. Yeah, that's experience. Uh, and, and so it feels like a slower-paced Call of Duty, and that's about it. It feels like a more tactical Call of Duty to me. That's all I'm saying. I'm kind that's of a little fed up with stupid running gun. And that's why I don't like Battlefield. It's much more it's much more long drawn out and tactical. It's like I like Call of Duty because it require you have to think more on your feet. You got to think fast. You got to form all these like small Honestly, miniature mind games. You must, and I don't want to play your, the same opponent. battle. It's like you got you got to you got to think fast. I'm it's a not fan the same boy battle for, for hour, the Red but, Faction yeah. games. So when I saw Battlefield 3 and 4, I went crazy. I love destruction. That's just me. I wasn't I as like hyped. What I, it does to the, I was not I as hyped. I like what it does with the gameplay. It makes it dynamic 
and not Agreed. just memorizing how the map is and judging your tactics based off oh, that because it's ever changing. Misha, can I go back oh, to your well, what uh, I, real? What life? I like to do is that uh, is um, I I like to think about my opponents. It's like I like to say, like, so where would so where would this I do that guy all be? the time in Battlefield, all the yes. time. Right, it's just you now have to take into account the level design because it's ever changing. One building at one moment could be up. There could be somebody in there, but if it's leveled, you don't have to worry about that. Well, so you, you, take you might. Different rounds. Sometimes debris is well, a yeah. great place to right. cover. Because right. every last soldier knows how to drive a tank and fly a helicopter. That's that, actually some of the more hilarious not... shit. Is when you see a helicopter flying upside down through the sky. <laughs> It makes well, me shake is, my head. It, Battlefield, <laughs> Battlefield 3 and 4 are not trying to... They're not trying to be another Arma. Arma is trying to be a simulator. Battlefield 3 is over the top. It knows it's over the top. It's not and trying I love to be it for an, it. It's not trying to be real life. It's not trying the to be a simulator. Any, the multiplayer anyways. I don't play Battlefield right. for, the, for the single player. If you are playing Battlefield for the single player, you are You're wrong. like me. I you are wrong. Wrong. Um, that's not apparently what Dice thinks because uh, because uh, um, Dice thinks that Dice what they said for Battlefield Three was that the single player was just as good as the multiplayer. Okay, I I'll play the single enjoyed player. the single player. You can all die. Hey, I like the single player too. Please don't kill me. No, I, I'm not saying I, I didn't like it. Like, I'm just saying. So the I played point, the single player. I'm like, wow, this is a uh, this is completely of ripping off Call of Duty, and it's got none of the fun. Okay, that must mean that the multiplayer also sucks. To Said each their itself. own. Bye Clearly, bye. we Woo! are all set in our mindsets here. Like, yep. I don't take, like, if a game is designed for multiplayer and it has a campaign, I never ever even try to take it seriously. I've there are not many this FPS just... games that have gross. It, it, it Does this turn into stories. a play more of Battlefield no. versus COD? I mean, really? <laughs> I am not. We're not, I'm not flaming, saying we're it's debating. Battlefield. There's a difference. Yes, I'm not Very saying slight. that Battlefield is trying to rip off COD. I'm saying it's different. It is a different. You play the game differently. It's not the same. I know. I'm just rustling your jimmies. Oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> And Josh has successfully trolled. Uh, now I will I hate say you so much. I, I the was... fiery Joker. Oh, I'm gonna get you one day. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get you. Yeah, it is yeah. going to be <laughs> revenge will be had. <laughs> okay, so I definitely was not as psyched for Battlefield Three as I am for Four. Honestly, Three I wasn't. I was a little excited, but I honestly wasn't like like fanboy. I... I am mean. such a fanboy for destruction that I actually liked Red Faction Armageddon. I actually liked it. I must be the only one in the world, but I thought it was fun. <laughs> not yeah, nearly you're, never, as good. you're never the only one. You are not never the only one. Nearly as You good. are not a unique snowflake, despite what they tell you. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know why. I really like that. It was not nearly... As good as the other Red Faction games because, you know, they took what was great and they got rid of most of it, but it was actually not that bad. I'm willing to con uh, well, I never played it, so I cannot say one way or the other, honestly. So, yeah, being, being honest, it's kind of a thing. Oh yeah, who here saw the uh, new Assassin's Creed? Not I. Well, wait, is it Black nope. Flag or no? Yeah, yes. Assassin Assassin's Creed Black Flag. <laughs> Why don't they just call it Pirates Pirates Creed and just drop all the yeah. and, ju and just drop because all the Because it's hype. a franchise and they've got to keep the money call train going. Assassin's Creed Renaissance Creed. I could call Call of Duty generic shooter <laughs> duty. <laughs> 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 I mean <laughs> like wow it, assassin's creed think about the title it's about assassins it is about a bloodline of assassins they decided to go in the direction of pirates i think it's a good pirates direction. and ninjas i don't think you are it, no i don't think it was a good direction because it didn't work in assassin's creed 3 but see but that wasn't pirates that was <laughs> revolution pirates no, it, no the thing it the, the thing is is that they're putting a focus on the on the ships they're putting a focus okay. on the guns and that is something that i didn't like in assassin's creed 3. okay okay I, okay i have to agree so, like i have i haven't played the recent assassin's creed games i played one i beat i loved it so much 
played to him about yes. halfway through. I've just been, you know, finding excuses to do other things like well, draw assassin. and play drums and stuff like that. But I really do need to get back into games. No, 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 for no. For, no, for for the love of for the love of your sanity, do not play Assassin's Creed Three. The it last Assassin's so Creed. I still need to beat Two and then Brotherhood and then all the other Assassin's Creeds and, and in Revelations. My opinion, in my opinion, Brotherhood is the best. I really enjoyed Revelations, and that was the last one I one I played. So, like, but, I love the concept. I just keep finding so, other things. That's like, like thing is, for Assa- to me, Assassin's Creed, the Assassin's Creed ma- franchise is slowly moving away from what made it good. It's pl- it's like seeing your target, planning out how you're going to, to take take this guy out with your arsenal, and and then get away with your stabbing knives. With your and stabbing like, knives. Like with the newer, it's like with the newer games. It seems to be more of how can I ma- how can I make more how can I make more money. Yeah, it's in the game. In the game, it's like how can I Mafia how can Wars I expand my how Assassin's can I expand Creed. my business empire? Well, see, okay, would you agree that at least in the original Assassin's Creed series, like one, two, the good ones, which we seem to think are the good ones here, that you were more or less the equivalent of a ninja? Yes, yes. you were an assassin. You were probably, a, but yeah. you're, you're kind of the equivalent of a ninja. I mean, you sneak around, you stab uh, people without them seeing you. Yeah, you yes, you're a ninja. Like, you scale yeah, walls. Yeah, yeah, it's like you sneak around. You hide. It's like you sneak around. You hide in plain sight. You are sight. the equivalent you, of you, a ninja. You cl- you're very acrobatic. You are you, the equivalent of a ninja. Yes. So yeah, I would. So now you are that's not a, only I'd a ninja, that's a welcome comparison. but a pirate. So now you Whoa. are a ninja and a pirate. <laughs> Putting <laughs> a debate. The debate. <laughs> yes, putting an end to the debate of which is better, ninjas are I'm pirates. A ninja with a pirate ship. <laughs> yes. And it's like, well, why not be a ninja pirate? Then you get the best of both worlds, or the worst of both, you know. We'll see. <laughs> I just I just thought that Shurikens was Shurikens and Petty Lasses. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured that was something I wanted to point out is you are now a ninja pirate. Disney <laughs> Infinity. What is that? What? Disney Infinity. Oh, I think I remember something about that. Uh, how long are we going to keep this going? Because, I mean, we could probably keep talking about this. Just, uh. this Looks like an awful game. I, I'm looking at the trailer. I'm like, nope. Again, nope, spider. Not AVR. Dragon I mean, Age 3. Gif, whatever. <sighs> Dragon Age 3, opinions. Uh, I'm, looking forward, I'm looking forward to it because uh, I was a fan of the first two. Okay. Yep. But I don't know. I... We didn't really see it. We didn't really see anything about it. It's uh, I. I do think that that uh, Dragon Age Two did end on a sour note. Yes, I more than anybody did not like the ending of Dragon Age Two. Not gonna because spoil it's anything. Totally, it's just totally not how I would have ended it. Like, it's like how I went. It's like how I, here's how I would have ended it. It's like you're you're given the choice between uh. Between the the High Templar and the and the Big Mage, it's like it's like they're saying that, Remember, no that it's like your only choice is to choose is to choose one of them. Do you know what I would have done? You know what? The world would be better off without both of you. Bam, bam, both of them dead. You know, I, like, I played well, the first I one, but without but, spoiling anything, I feel like the ending. B, I was siding with the mages through and through, so you know how I felt with the ending. Yep. Because it's like, oh, well, we are propagating said said image about how the mages are evil. And then, well, you have allies with the mages. And then the ending, it feels like, you know what? That was awful. I'm not going to hint out because you can probably derive it. Derive the spoiled ending if I go into why. But I felt, in a way, backstabbed by the ending. Because I sided with the mages. I felt backstabbed. I felt nothing because I didn't play the game. So as yeah, it's I, a, I, don't, it's the, a, I just really I kind of struggle to understand. Like, it's if you really look at the game, it's kind of biased against the Templars. I thought the opposite. Really? I thought it's it was biased a, against. A, I, re- mages. I, really thought, I really thought that the game was really discouraging you from siding with the Templars. I don't know. When I started playing, I got like halfway through the first one. Oh, and yeah. I got and really tired. Oh well, Anders. no. I'm not... What they did with Anders was okay. unacceptable. 
I, well, what I was talking about is in the perspective of the story. The story is against mages, but like mechanically, the the developers urging the the player. I think they were urging them towards mages, because yeah, what, what I mean. the Templars were doing was unjust. But I'm saying from a lore perspective, it was very against mages. The lore, yeah, it's like the mages. Like mages are very mage, mages in the terms of the story are very are very looked down looked down upon. And yeah, you can kind of see why they do the things that they do. But, but then you look at but the in terms ending, of, uh, the, and I'm like, what? But in terms Why? of the things they ha they made they made you do in the game, the thing the choices that they had you decide between, it's like, yeah, they were kind of banking on you siding with the mages. Yeah, I agree. Um, so <laughs> it's like, but what they did with Anders, evil back to Anders, it's like they just sucked all the likability out of him from from, Dra from Dragon Age Awakening. Good job. Good job, game developers or writers. <laughs> it's like, well it's done. Like gone, gone was a, gone was the snarky apostate mage that was, gone was the snarky apostate mage that named his kitten Sir Pouncelot, and instead we get a whiny, broody emo guy who says, "I'm to it's like I'm tortured, and it's like the Templars are evil." Blah. Yeah. Blah. <laughs> I can't wait until somebody abducts you and like c violates you inhumanly and just tortures you for days what, on wait, end. What? And then what? when the police rescue you, I'm gonna be like, well, I was violated and it hurt. Because like... <laughs> you are a horrible person, Vijay. Going through something like that changes Horrible. People. Going What's through that? something like that changes people. Going through something like what changes people? Get it's a just having a spirit of justice that inside you. That that that's it. That's justice it. Justice wasn't exactly the nicest individual in the world. <laughs> justice was a dick. And the, also that and also that thing was kind of well gone. It's a. It's like the whole the whole thing with Dragon Age Awakening is like, oh wait, uh, when did that happen? Justice going into Anders, um, when did that happen? Because I don't know. I play Again, Dragon, I didn't play. I play because the way I played Dragon Age Awakening, uh, I left Justice. Uh, I left Justice at the city, and I uh, took Anders with me. Oh yeah, because you know, in continuity between stories, that's awesome. However, uh, going your choices mean that. nothing. Your choices going, mean nothing. Hold on. Going. That's, that's the biggest problem with Dragon Age 2. No matter yes. what you choose, no matter what you decide, you're forced to pick between two sucky decisions. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and both of nice. those decisions mean little in the end. Yeah. Th yeah, if you think about it. There you go. Like, hey, so Josh, Misha. Can, can you two convince me to start playing this again? Because I never really got over the whole the entire world hates you and you have no friends and every time I enter a new area, somebody is hired an assassin to kill me. I'm dead, 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 uh, which, dead. Which, like, one are you, which one are you talking about? The the first one. I can't do it. Uh, it's... Someone's hired an assassin to kill you? Uh, uh, are you talking about to... that one dude? The... The one dude that the you guy can... you pick up for your party? No, I I, yeah. I got him, and then I got past that. And the immediate next scene, oh, it's about time a Grey Warden showed up, and we get rushed and killed in like four seconds. So it's like, oh, what? I don't, I don't remember that. I'm maybe to enter you're the dwarf area. Maybe but... you're just a really really unlikable person. Oh, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> but going to what I was going to say about Dragon Age Three is the first one, I believe the story of the first one was amazing. The writing was great. The gameplay, the actual battles, uh, 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 uh. Yay. That I play so as fun. a mage, I played as, I play as a mage in every single game. Playing as a mage in the first one, your auto attack was just you pointing your staff at them and then like this tiny little ball of flyer, fire, you just kind of like slowly like, kind of gracefully bury its way to the enemy and it would hit them for damage. And the second one, you are like a freaking martial artist with the staff. <laughs> like you're flinging it and you're like hitting them and I was like, oh my God, this looks so powerful. Like 
playing as a mage in the second one you felt powerful the the gameplay the mechanics of the game in the second one were so good besides the fact that, that like endless waves of spawning enemies completely removed how tactical the game was and it just became how fast you could do damage to the enemies instead of actually you know planning out your positioning and yeah the I know strategic like element that. of it uh, call of duty world at war <laughs> <laughs> so um, I hope that the third one finds a happy medium between that, to where you feel powerful, but you're not going through six ways of enemies to where it's removing positioning or anything like that, and how the second one was really, really weak on story, and you couldn't customize your allies because you couldn't re-equip them except by their weapon. I hated that. But yeah, I loved no how... Ability. But I loved how combat was so much more polished. I hope they find the happy medium in the third one. I really, really do. I just invented a new word, by the way. Customability. I'm pretty sure the actual <laughs> word is customization. Sure a... Yeah, I've heard that quite a few times. <laughs> new but words. My concern is Dragon Age 3 is coming out for the PS4, the X-Bone, the PC, the 360, and the PC. Uh, the so, PS3. Yeah, I the think PS... it's going to be... It's coming it's out gonna... on the PC twice. It's so good. Yeah. The 360 and the PS3, I think, is really going to hold it back bad. It's possible. I think it's going to hold it back. It's possible. I, I can see that. But we'll see. We uh, It's just a matter of time at this point. So much games. So much discussion. So much yep. fanboying. And yep. total... Uh, discussions, not Flame Wars at all, or Josh trolling I'm like that. <sighs> John, fucking fiery joker. So. Oh, and apparently Lost Planet is coming out. Wait, 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 what? what? Lost Planet what now? Three, Lost Planet 3. Huh. I, I enjoyed the first one. The first one was good, the second one was a bit of a disappointment. I yes, hope they, they do agree. the third one correctly. I agree, really the do. first one I really enjoyed, the second one was very meh. I never even beat it all the way through, I just... Lost interest. And Mirror's Edge 2. We'll see how that one goes. Mirror, the first Mirror's Edge, I didn't play it, but I watched people play it. It looked very good. I'll, I can say that much. But no personal experience on that. But, uh, yeah, I mean... But, yeah, I mean, this podcast has been going for, like, Two hours. Two hours? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, let, let's, let's end this. This is our largest podcast to date. That has and been it's published. It's all about video games. <laughs> that yep. has. This is our longest podcast to date that was published. There is another one which I never speak of, except for this one instance. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've spoken of it, now haven't you? Yeah, but it will never see the day, light of day. It still exists. Banish it into a dungeon in the place we banish it. It to. still yes. exists on my computer, but I, I, uh, I no, I, I haven't been able to delete it i haven't brought myself to delete it but i haven't brought myself to uh editing it either i i know <laughs> i i don't know what will happen with that thing but yeah podcast okay. over so let's wrap this up uh, please i'm hungry i need food i am hungry too i'm about to order yeah food. i need chinese food i need advil i am gonna order chinese food too hey josh <laughs> you want to order chinese food you don't I live in the same spot i know you want to do it anyway <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> okay, whatever. I'm tired. I'm tired. Leave We're, me alone. Yeah. I, I can go so. for hours because I am tireless. Rah, rah. Not really. Dude, that was really, no, just no. All right, let's just wrap this up. Yeah. Yes, please. Someone say just say Good night, goodbye. Fob. Everyone have a nice day, night, evening, wherever you happen to be. Take care. Oh, oh yes. Happy Flag Day. Is it Flag yes, Day? Yes, that too. Yes, happy Flag Day, then. And if you got a topic you want us to discuss on the Bob Equestria podcast, just simply send us an email at bobequestria at gmail.com with a submission titled podcast and stuff. Yeah. And stuff. You can add okay. and stuff if you want. This you has been the Bob Equestria podcast. Mache out. Spangle, signing off. Semper Philly. <laughs>